You ready? And you can cut out anything that I mess up, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Foster. I teach architecture, graphic design, and engineering at Cedar Ridge High School, and welcome to Bridge Building Basics. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk to you about is how to develop your design. So, you're given, you've probably just been told about the project, you're going to design a bridge, right? So, how do you start? Where do you come up with ideas? Well, you guys can come, you guys know how to kind of develop things, to sketch things out, that kind of stuff, to come up with an idea. What I want to talk about a little bit is what are the pitfalls I've seen? What are some things students do that can become a problem when they're developing a design in the first place? So, first thing I want to tell you is when you're coming up with the design, first of all, be willing to let it be bad. Your first design doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to solve all the problems, doesn't even have to look very good. You're just generating ideas. You're coming up with stuff that you can respond to. So let it be bad. Let it be ugly the first time around. That'll give you the ability to kind of experiment, come up with ideas that maybe you wouldn't thought of otherwise because you're not thinking, oh, is this right? Is this correct? Think about, you know, be willing to take some risks the first time around. You'll be able to fix them later. So let it be bad. The second thing is you want to develop options. So, let's say you come up with bridge A. You'll draw that up. And you'll think, okay, this is great. This is what we want to do. Don't stop there. Think, I need to come up with some different options so that I can really think through the design and think through all the issues. So, it's, students have a real tendency to kind of stop with their first idea and run with it and really not develop it. So, if you're stuck there, think about what's the opposite of that. Think about, okay, here I've done this design. What would be the opposite strategy for that? Is there really an opposite to a design strategy? No, you're just looking for ways to generate ideas. So think of the opposite. So B is the opposite of A. Usually by that point, you've gotten yourself unstuck, and you may lead to something that's you may be able to generate more ideas and won't be stuck on your first one. So then you're usually pretty easy to come up with an option C. If you need to come up with something that's maybe between those two or different from both of them, that'll help you come up with an option C. So that's ways of developing options. I think you're going to be required to develop three options. That's usually a good strategy for any kind of design. There's three options, you're good. You've kind of experimented with the whole range of possibilities. Okay, so as you're developing these options, you want to look at it from several views. Let's say I'm designing a birdhouse. I can look at it from the front. I can look at it from the side. Maybe I could look at it from the top. And that gives me some idea of what my birdhouse is going to look like from various angles. But you also probably want to do something in three dimensions so you can see what it looks like um, all put together. So try different drawings. Remember, point number one, let it be bad. Don't worry about how good your drawing is. Just draw something. It's a way of generating ideas and thinking about it. By drawing different views of it, you can get an idea of what the possibilities are, where things are working and not working. Um, from different angles. So experiment with different views. Try things out. Have fun with it. This is really the part of the project where you get to experiment. So this has been Schematic Design for your Bridge Building Basics. <laughs>